What signals are you sending? I, being a student of comparative religion, I would like to say that if you read the Mahabharat, there are more verses of killing in Mahabharat than the Quran. If you have a competition, <laughs> Mahabharat has more verses of killing people than compared to the Quran. Bhagavad Gita is nothing but a guidance given by Sri Krishna to Arjun. Arjun says, how can I fight against my own cousins? If you read Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 1, verse number 43, 44, 45, 46, he puts his arms on the battlefield and says, I would prefer dying unarmed rather than fight my cousins. Immediately, Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 2, verse number 2, Sri Krishna, he says, Arjun, how could you be an important? And he continues, time doesn't permit me, you can see my videotape. It says that it is a duty of the Kshatriya to fight. When we see in context, I being a student of comparative religion, I agree with all the verses of fighting in Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharat because I know the context. It's a fight between justice and injustice. It's a fight between truth and falsehood. And what Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharata say that if you have to fight against falsehood, against injustice, even if it be your cousins, no problem, family members, fight them. We are with it. That is what the Quran says. What my request is that even the police should know the religious teachings of the different citizens of India. And I always take opportunity, and in the past several years, I have spoken to several non-Muslim police officers, senior police officers in Bombay, in Bangalore, in various cities of India. I was even called a couple of years back to the National Police Academy in Hyderabad, where I addressed more than 100 IPS officers, high-ranking commissioners of police, DIG, IG, DG, the Director General of the National Academy was there. And when I spoke, they were shocked. Most of the information I gave, they were shocked. You should know what is the teaching of different religions. Imagine if I pick up these verses of the Mahabharata and Bhagavad Gita and quote out of context, surely we can get rights here. We have to understand different religions. And by God's grace, Alhamdulillah, I have spoken to police and military internationally. In UK, in USA, in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, in UAE. Alhamdulillah. And I love interacting, especially with the non-Muslim police. Giving them the right picture of Islam. Unfortunately, they get the information of Islam from the international media. I'll come to the media in the ending. So what we should say, that we should have understanding. I've been told by several advocates, and as Justice Suresh also said, that hundreds of Muslims were picked up. They were detained. Some of them mentally tortured. Some of them physically tortured. The advocates told me that the clans, as Justice Suresh said, that they were tortured. Some of them were even made to sign on papers which didn't agree, even on blank papers. If you know who the culprits are, select a few, catch them if proven. If they have done it, they should be punished. We aren't against it. But to catch thousands of innocent Muslims, what signals are you sending? Imagine to catch 10 terrorists, you interrogate and harass a thousand innocent Muslims, irrespective whether you catch those 10 terrorists or not, surely you are making 100 new terrorists. <laughs> Many non-Muslim senior police officers in different parts, in different cities of India, and one particular in Bombay, he told me, Zakir Bhai, talk to Zakir Naik, I will only be happy if you give talk in Hindi and Urdu. Your talk should be heard by the masses. I didn't speak. Recently, a couple of years back, I started speaking. Many senior non-Muslim police officers in different parts of India, they tell me, they know that by God's grace, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people come for my talks. And when I went to Kashmir, because I was the official guest, I met the minister, power minister, chief minister. But at that time, the governor of Kashmir, Saxena, he wanted to meet me. My schedule was tight. Non-Muslim, I took out time. He wanted lunch, dinner, no time, I went for breakfast. Saxena, the governor of Kashmir, he happened to be an ex-military man. I forgot his post, some colonel or major or high post he was. And we discussed. He was caring for the people of Kashmir. Later on, he comes to Maharashtra, he comes to Bombay. He wants to meet me. He calls me to the Raj Bhavan, the governor's house. I go and meet there. He tells Dr. Zakir Naik, you know, the impact that you had in Kashmir, the people that follow you, we want you to come again. We want you to come on the television of Kashmir. We want to come on the radio. But what my question is, 
that do you think my talk will be effective? I know that there is not a single verse in the Quran which justifies the killing of innocent human beings. There is not a single saying, a hadith of the Prophet, that you can kill innocent human being even if they belong to the same community that does an injustice to you. I know that. I can speak. But imagine if thousands of innocent Muslims are being harassed. The police, they tell us that most probably it's a hand of the L.E.T. Lakshya Toiba. For sake of argument, I agree with it. And the police tells us that the local hand should be involved, otherwise the bomb blast can't take place. I agree with it. Imagine the lashkar e if they're involved, if you interrogate a thousand innocent human beings, they'll get ready-made recruits. Ready-made. You torture them, ready-made recruits. Isn't the police helping the lashkar e I'm sorry, please don't get me wrong. I don't want them to misunderstand me, otherwise they'll come to arrest me also. What signals are you sending? Imagine if I agree with you that your theory is correct, that Lashkar Tohiba is involved and they want local hands. You should get the Muslims in confidence. You can't round up a thousand innocent Muslims. We know, we understand that getting the culprits is very difficult, especially because the bomb blast was done with precision, with accuracy. It was a mastermind, according to the police. We know it is difficult. We understand your case, but that doesn't mean in the name of interrogation, you pick up a few innocent people, we can understand. But thousands, what message are you sending? Do you think my lecture will be effective? Maybe I will be able to convince two, three percent, five percent, not more than that. So we have to solve the problem. What is the root problem? And the police should get the confidence of the citizens. If that is not there, how will they be able to stop terrorism? And if you want respect, you should give respect. There were good policemen also, many of my friends who are advocates and lawyers, they told me that there were good policemen who helped the people when they were harassed. Some of the policemen had a very good heart. They helped them, they supported them. But generally, oh, you have a beard. Why do you have a beard? Oh, you have trousers above the ankle. Why do you keep it? Wearing a cap, as though it is mentioned in the rule book. A terrorist should have a beard, should have trousers above the ankle and a cap, then I would be number one terrorist. Even I have my trousers above the ankle, I'm wearing a cap and I have a beard. What signals are you sending? There should be a proper training, a proper understanding of the religion of Islam. That's what William, when he advised, he told the US government that you don't know Islam. George Bush doesn't know Islam at all. It was an article that came yesterday in the midday. He doesn't know. Unless you don't understand, how will you be able to solve the problem? I don't want the police to misunderstand me. When I tell the Muslims that killing innocent people is wrong, though many Muslims disagree with me, Quran condemns it. Our Prophet condemned it. Killing any innocent human being, you can't justify it. I have to speak the truth. At the same time, I even have to speak the truth to the police force. I hope they understand the situation. And according to Julio Ribeiro, he writes an article in Hindustan Times, I think it was the 9th of September. He says that more the unnecessary arrests that are made to get a breakthrough becomes more difficult proportionately. The more unnecessary people you arrest, the chances you get at the real culprit is more difficult. On the 2nd of September 2006, there was a good gesture by the police commissioner of Bombay, A. N. Roy. He wrote a personal letter to a couple of hundred Muslim leaders saying that the investigation is unbiased, we aren't harassing the Muslims. I too received one of these letters. And he said that if there is any query, any questions, we can come and sit across the table. We can talk. It's a good gesture. The letter came recently, just maybe a week back. I only hope it is not a theoretical exercise of public relations. If it's practically implemented, that innocent Muslims should not be harassed. If you really want to get the confidence, you see to it that you get the